Let me get my hoses over here. Okay. We uh, last weekend when I was doing the oil change. I noticed that the uh, the hoses. Here, take my phone and you can show them in case they see it in their boots. These hoses that come from the seacock over there to the sea strainer go to the main engines. You see the bubbles that they have on them. That's not good. That'll sink our boat. So we're gonna replace those. It it goes to the pump and then over to the engine from there, and that's on both sides. So what we're gonna do is uh, we bought new hoses that are $14 a piece. So uh, we're gonna replace those to give us assurance because I don't wanna take a chance of all those bubbles, if those mounts or whatever, if one of them blows out, it'll sink our boat. So that's why it's so important on your boat to, uh, to go through and just do a safety check like that all the time. So, you know, but some of these boats sit there for six months, it makes you wonder how in the world they keep them sinking. Oh, tell me about the people we met at West Marine, what they're going to do for us. Oh, uh, we talked to the Coast Guard at West Marine. We went in there, they had a booth set up, and um, they were uh, giving out uh, free inspections. So they're going to set up a time and come get with us and give us do a free inspection on our boat to make sure that we're good, we're Coast Guard legal. And if you pass, it'll uh, it'll put a sticker on your boat, and nobody will mess with you. Nobody will do inspections on it, game warden or whoever. You got free pass after that. Um, I don't hundred percent think ours is going to pass. Why? <laughs> We're well, illegal people. <laughs> well, we, we got it. I need to replace our flares, okay. and I have a, uh, a nav light, an anchor light, I should say, that I'm having an issue with. But he did say that if you don't pass, he'll tell you what you need. Yes. You can get it, and then they'll come back for free and recheck your boat, and make sure you have everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly, I want them to come check me out and make sure I'm legal. That way, I know, I know what they're looking for because. I want to follow the rules, make them happy, but I also want to follow the rules so I can keep uh, me and Cindy safe. Very good. Okay, guys, well, we'll keep you posted. We got this project today. Like Sean said, we're going to save out, uh, change out this exhaust hose. And uh, yeah, so we'll be coming back. I do have one more thing, though. Um, well, yeah, we don't have time for one more thing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two more things. <laughs> All right, if you look down there, you see there's a, uh, a hose clamp. See, there's two hose clamps on every connection, right? Yes. And according to the Coast Guard, you're supposed to have two hose clamps on every every end of every hose that could possibly sink you oh okay so uh that's why they're like that and uh i bought some new hose clamps i'll be replacing my hose clamps and i don't know if if this is coast guard recommendation but for all of them my boat are opposite so the turn buckles on this side on this hose clamp and the other one's on the other side gotcha and it makes sense i don't know yeah so i want to do mine like this boat been because this boat's never sank so <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a good bad. sign anyway, okay. so that is Coast Guard regulations, so, okay. and it makes sense. That way you don't take a chance of one of them coming loose and, and sinking your boat for a, a $4 hose clamp. Yeah. And you got to use stainless steel. Okay. If you use zinc or something, you know, zinc plated, you know, it could, it'll rust and that kind of thing. If you have any that are rusted, it's cheaper to replace a $5 hose clamp than it is to sink yeah. a boat. Okay. All right. Well, while Sean's getting ready, I'm going to turn this around. Tell you something. Okay. So let me put this here so I can talk freely. Okay. So this morning... Sean calls me. I guess he's at the front. Uh, he's at the pier at the marina um, up by the car. And he calls me. And he tells me, there's an alligator in the marina. <laughs> and here in Texas, we see alligators. I mean, I don't see them every day, but I have seen them at like ponds. And then you've seen them in bayous out at the chemical plants he works in and things like that. But never seen one here in Clear Lake or in our marina. So I ran down the pier. I made all of our friends think something was wrong. Uh, but it would make them all come down. So we got to see the, the alligator. And um, based on, we were told... I'm not an alligator professional, but I was told by one of our friends that from the, was it the snout, the nose? Okay, I think he said the snout or the nostrils to the eyes. The length between that is, uh, helps you determine how big the alligator is because you only see like his head and maybe a little hump down the middle, but not his whole body out of the water. It doesn't come out of the water. Um, he said he was about six foot long. So a six foot gator uh, was located right here, um, a couple slips in front of us at our marina here in Texas. So I was so excited. I tried to get a video for you guys, but of course, as soon as we spotted him and he, everybody started looking at him, he got shy and he went back down into the water. So um, just wanted to share that excitement. I'm still so excited about seeing the alive alligator today right here close to us. And I will never, ever, ever swim <laughs> in this water again. I'm like, ain't doing it, ain't doing it. I'm not paddle boarding here, nothing. <laughs> But anyway, okay guys, we'll come back to you and tell you all about our um, our uh, task for the day, okay? Our project. 
Okay, so Sean is down here. Looks like he's working on the first one. Fighting a hose. He's fighting, trying to get it unhooked. He got the top unhooked, but hose is kind of thick, kind of hard to move, kind of hard to bend, you know. Or so I've heard. <laughs> I'm just, you know, first mate, hanging out, waiting to see if I'm needed. But we wanted to show, or I wanted to show you as he was working that it's a little little tough to get the hose off, I guess. Even the guy at the um, Blackbird, Blackburn Marine where we bought the parts from said that those warped places could come from heat over time, which it is the exhaust, so I know the heat's coming through it. Or if the hoses were old, it could be from um, the copper inside of the hoses coming apart and letting water seep through into the inner layer of the hose, which our boat is a 98 model. So it very well could be time because Sean said these hoses are probably the original hoses. So it is a 98, right, Sean? Yeah. I don't make sure I wasn't telling him wrong. So just be prepared. We do have the AC, the icy breeze cooler going with nice AC blowing. And of course he's got his little fan, a little Milwaukee fan down here. Um, it's battery operated. So just wanted to give you guys an update on how it's going. We're still working on the first one, trying to get it loose. Okay, so we finally, because I did help, right? <laughs> she said, right. <laughs> so we finally um, got the end hose. So you can see this, what's that, three feet? The hose That's is two about feet. two feet. And um, here, let me have it, Sean. I'll show them those blisters on it. So you can see these blisters right here. That's what we've replaced this because of. So wanted you guys to see that. They're all over it. And that at any point in time could bust and flood your, sink your boat actually, just yeah. completely sink it. So you can see it went from that piece Sean's got in his right hand all the way down to the one he's cleaning with his left. Um, very hard to get off, but he finally got it off. It was just really, really tight. And he said that the markings, the date on this hose says it's five years old, but we don't know that he put it on five years ago. Right, Sean? I have no idea. I guess if it's only five years old, he probably did put it on five years ago. Yeah, okay. Hopefully, hopefully if it's at least five years old. But anyway, um, so now we're going to work on putting it back, a new one back. All right, here we go. Okay, so we finally got that one off and we got a new piece cut. Sean cut it right here with this, what was that, a Sawzall? Yeah. With that, <laughs> Sawzall, over a tr bathroom trash can so we didn't have to go out in the heat because it's like 105 today. And um, so we won't have this problem the next time when we have to replace them, you know, in the future. We put some Vaseline, on, he put some Vaseline on both ends on the inside of the hose. That way um, it'll be a little bit easier hopefully next time for either us or whoever has the boat after us. Um, because you do know we'll be moving on to a, a bigger boat one day, right? Um, so we did that, and we are now putting a new hose back on where we just took one off. So, And then we'll put some new clamps on there and move on to the next one. Okay, so we are going to take our dinghy home because um, one of the eyelets, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the eyelets got pulled out when we had that horrific, <laughs> horrific wake from that big old huge ship a couple weeks ago and so um sean's ordered a patch kit correct yep like a little patch to stick on there it didn't put a hole in the thing it just ripped the eyelet out um so we're gonna take it home so we just dropped off the jeep and now we're in sean's truck and or his work truck same thing and uh, we're going back to the boat and we're gonna jump on the dinghy and we're gonna take the dinghy back over to the boat ramp that way we can load it on the trailer and take it back home with us and we'll come from uh, we'll come live video from our home in Conroe, Texas when we're doing that and show you how we fixed it and, and show them. We're also, we're also doing an oil change. It said uh, 20 hours for the break-in service. It went about $300 to do it, so we're going to do it for $50. We'll take it home. And, and the motor weighs 100 pounds. It's not super heavy, but I can hang it from my tractor and pick it up and um, sort of change all the oil okay. and do we'll my, show you do my break in service. Yeah. Save a little bit of money for, and, our, for our trip. Coming. And that's on the engine on the dinghy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll show you that. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we'll probably do a video on our dinghy ride tonight. I'm um, going back up to the boat ramp. We just wanted to let you know what our plans are. Okay, so we got back to the boat and we took the dinghy up here to the public boat ramp. Boat ramp excuse me, the public boat ramp. Um, 
probably took us, what, maybe 15 minutes, John? Yeah. Maybe 15 minutes to get up here. Um, it is a very busy time of day. It's a Saturday. It's like maybe 5.30 in the afternoon. So a lot of the fishermen and boaters that don't, you know, permanently have their boats on the water are taking their boats out. So it's very busy. So Sean's going to go grab the Jeep and get in line. I'm going to, I guess, turn in circles for a while <laughs> and wait on him. Hopefully I can do this. I used to do it all the time with our wakeboard boat, but amazingly this uh, dinghy is just way different to drive. It's one of the outboard, you know, engines and it's got the little handle that you have to st steer opposite of where you want to go, all that jazz. Not my cup of tea. What can I say? I'm a chick. I don't enjoy doing that. But um, yeah, so we're here. There's there's a bridge, and we had the last video. We had just dropped our car off here. So all right, stay tuned. All right, our dinghy here. The uh, you know these these tow hooks. There's one in the front, and one on the side, and one on that side. The one on that side got pulled out. So anyway, uh, I bought these new ones. That you, you, uh, you, you put on here and yeah, it's gonna attach right here. So I'm gonna put two new ones, one on either side. Um, and there's a lot of steps you have to do as far as sanding it and uh, clean it. You have to buy the special MEK. It's, you know, it's, it's made for this type of thing. It helps a uh, chemical bond when you put the PVC glue on. But um, we got several steps we wanna do. I don't know what I'm doing, but I've watched up YouTube and read enough directions that I think I got it. So we're gonna get this thing started and uh, let you know. But it has to be in, um, I think, uh, between 48 degrees and 77 degrees. Um, and the uh, humidity has to be less than like 70 something. So um, the only place we have to do that is in our house. So we had to take the whole inside out and uh, um, the motor off and everything. And um, the motor, we'll show you later, but the motor, uh, they wanted $300 to do the break-in service on it. So I just brought it home and did it myself for like $50. So uh, I already got that done. And while I had it out of the water, uh, the props had little scuffs on them from hitting rocks or whatnot. So I sanded those and put a file on them and got them straightened out and repainted. So uh, the motor looks good and it's ready to go. The break-in service is at 20 hours. So uh, we're at 24 and a half now. So the next oil change will be at 200, so we have a long ways to go for our next oil change. So um, I figure maybe every year, or so we'll bring it home and do maintenance to it and take it back, make it make it last longer. Good deal. So he took the bottom, the insides out of the dinghy, and he painted some of the wood that's up here in the front, and he cleaned the um, what is that metal? Aluminum. Aluminum bottom. He cleaned that. We're gonna take this out when we get finished with this tomorrow. And clean it real good. Again, we bought this on Amazon. What'd you pay for this? Like fourteen? No, uh, less than a thousand. Oh, okay, less than a thousand dollars. And it's been a really good dinghy. It's it's you, you guys have seen us on our videos, but we did bring it home. We brought it home on a trailer last weekend, and that way, like Sean said, we could have it. We just took put it in our dining room, uh, emptied everything out. That way, we had room to put it. So, all right, we will we will let you know how this goes. And you bought this patch kit off of Amazon? Yes. And you watched some YouTube videos about it? I have. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to try it out. See if we, this is, we lost this uh, hook in that incident when the big ship rocked us so bad. <laughs> it was a crazy day. Was that sandpaper? Yeah. So you outlined it and then you're just scuffing the, where you're going to put it at? Yeah. So we drove down to Laporte, Sullivan Beach, and we came across this uh, railroad depot museum that is open and it's pretty cool. Um, got a lot of history. You know, all these little old uh, Texas coast towns have lots of history. You guys have seen them from our videos. And even though we don't live too terribly far from here, uh, we've never been here before. So over there is the beach. Um, it looks like they have a skate park, like a skateboard park. Okay, loud truck. Um, they have a pavilion and the guy, um, what was his name, Sean? Pat. 
he um, told us that the, you know the history of this and back in the early um, 1900s the train came through here and brought people from Houston down to this beach and it was like a a weekend getaway um, of course hurricanes throughout the years have just destroyed things so they just finally quit building stuff back but there is a really nice sandy beach of course you know it's, it's Galveston Bay water so it's not pretty water but you know it's beach <laughs> you get what you got right <laughs> um, but it's tons of people over there they have bathhouses and a uh, little bait shop they have a pier that goes out real far um, so it's pretty cool but this is this is pretty cool So this is the caboose. How cool is this? What is that? It's dark in here. Oh wow. How does it sit up there? Let me see. Oh how cool. You sit up there? Let me go by you. Okay, so we came to the Galveston Brewery. Um, it's right here in Kima, and Sean's gonna do a flight of lovely beers that they have here, and I'm gonna do a flight of seltzers that they have here. So it's really pretty. They've got beautiful, beautiful atmosphere, got all their little stuff back there. And um, we actually rode our dinghy over here, so very, very fun. So we got to the boat tonight, it's Friday. Came down a little later, and um, our front AC was not working. Our rear AC was working good, but the front one had an error. And so Sean said it wasn't pumping out water. So he went and we got some bleach. And now he's uh, borrowed a what, an air compressor from Mitch and Paula, our boat neighbors. who are lifesavers. But we're uh, just trying to clean out the line. I guess the algae from the water, because it's been so stinking hot here in Texas and we've had absolutely no rain. The algae has just clogged up that one line really, really bad going from the AC down, or excuse me, out of the boat. So that's what we're doing now, I'm trying to get this fixed. So I will let you know what worked and hopefully we will be okay tonight. <laughs> okay, so today we went to West Marine and yes, the most expensive store <laughs> in the world and bought a new dinghy because our dinghy, ever since we took it home, um, yeah. to do those repairs it had a leak it leaked in the bottom and we could not figure out where it was coming from so we went and got a new one today and we're gonna move the engine the motor from one to the other so and our lovely boat friends cliff and mitch helped us all right so we got our engine all moved over to the new dinghy um like i said we got it at west marine it's the same distance like uh, same length as the current one that we had um, it's just a little bit more narrow but it is awfully pretty and it's got an aluminum bottom oh excuse me a fiberglass bottom our old one had an aluminum bottom so this one's fiberglass which is made made more sturdy right sean yes yeah so it has a vinyl bottom oh okay uh, with aluminum floor so it will tear easy and yeah it did. and it did yeah we're just not real sure where the hole's at but anyway this is our new toy for our trip we're going to be taking in a month we leave in a month guys so can't wait for our trip to go to down the east coast or down the coast to the east <laughs> all the different stops we're going to make we're going to take uh, our boat out of here in texas and go down you know louisiana mississippi alabama and we're hoping to make it all the way to florida so yeah and that's all of our boat friends over there that helped us carry it and borrow their truck to get it today so super nice people